Welcome back to the channel folks. This week we're going to be fitting this, the Innov K2 dual motorcycle dash cam system. We're going to be fitting it via the Hex Easy Can system onto a BMW R1250 GS. But pretty much standard fitment throughout all bikes. So stick around, hope you enjoy. Na 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 Eh? How good is that? And here it is folks, the Innov K2 is a dual camera system for your bike, it works just like a dash cam, they also do a car version. The system is 100% weatherproof, fits to any bikes, including CAN buses, hence why I'm fitting it to the GS. It's got built-in GPS to automatically track your ride, and it's fully integrated with a mobile app. So unboxing, really good quality, a little bit like an Apple box when you open it. Inside the box, there's the contact card for Innov UK themselves. Some real stylish packaging here, leads to the quality of the product. Inside the box, it's all foam packed, very Apple-esque. You have the DVR module, the front and rear HD cameras, and the GPS unit. Each camera comes with a predetermined length of wire. You can buy differing lengths depending on the size of your bike from the Innov website. The cameras themselves are top quality solid aluminium housings. They're entirely weatherproof. The cameras will give you 1080 resolution at 30 frames per second at the front, 720 at 30 at the rear, or alternatively, you can have both cameras 720 resolution at 60 frames per second. The GPS sensor allows you to track Track your journey, meaning you can also align your GPS information to your video evidence in the event of any kind of accident. The DVR module itself is an entirely weatherproof solid state drive. Both front and rear cameras will plug in here. It's also got weatherproof ports for your micro SD card. The unit supports up to 256 gigabytes to give you up to 19 hours of full HD recording. It's also got the reset pin access, which again is totally weatherproof and an onboard mic. The sound quality isn't great, but that's something Innov are working for to the future. Inside the DC converter box, funnily enough, is the DC converter. It's 12 volts with an inbuilt 1 amp fuse. This supplies power from your bike's battery to the DVR module and it's got a switched live accessory feed which we are going to be fitting to the Hex Easy Can, meaning the whole system is activated the second the ignition is turned on. A variety of high quality fabricated mounts are included together with a selection of 3M adhesive mounting strips and anti-vibration rubber strips to give you crystal smooth footage through the cameras. Also included is the Innov sticker, the social media card, and some destructions if you want them. Let's crack on. Stage one folks, you're going to want to test the whole system to make sure everything works before you install it on the bike. Connect up both cameras to the DVR module, doesn't matter which one you use as the front and rear at the moment. Next, connect up the GPS system. It's all clearly labelled on the DVR module which connectors which. Now I've connected up the DC converter, looking back on it I suppose that was pretty pointless, but I did it anyway. Next you're going to want to insert your SD card, the system allows up to 256 gigabyte card, that will give you around about 15 hours of 1080 at 30 frames per second recording. Next we need to add some power, so use the external input port to plug in a mini USB cable and plug that either into an external battery pack or into USB plug and into the mains. Push and hold on the big silver button for a couple of seconds and the green recording light will start to flash. Now you need to grab your phone, make sure you download the Innov K2 app from either iOS or Android. Go into your Wi-Fi settings on your phone or device, connect to the Innov K2 Wi-Fi network, it'll ask you to enter the password. Default is 12345678. You can change that at a later date. Wait for it to connect. Then open up the Innov K2 app. Touch the camera icon. You'll get a warning that you need to format the SD card. Just hit yes. I had to reconnect to the Innov K2 Wi-Fi after I formatted the SD card. You might have to do the same. Back into the app. 
tap the camera icon and bosh there we go the system works last bit of prep folks is just connect a couple of terminal connectors to the red and black wires of the dc converter so you can easily attach this to your battery right now comes the fun part folks so we've updated the firmware on the dv module we have ensured that we're getting a feed uh, to both the cameras we've checked all that everything's working now it's just a matter of wiring everything up and locating it on the bike so the dc converter unit here i'm locating that here i'm going to use a little bit of uh, double-sided velcro just to locate that there under the seat it's not going to interfere when the seat goes on the top there so that is all fine the red and black uh, power terminals from here i'm running down the side of the bike to the battery you can if you want lift the tank and feed them underneath through here following these cables that's a bit above my pay grade so i'm just running them down the side same as i did for the hex easy can just following the power supply for that basically exactly like before when you connect the terminals remember the negative comes off first and it goes on last so remember that take off the negative terminal then take off the positive terminal keep them nice and separate from the battery then take the dc converter connect on the positive first onto the battery secure all the positives connect them up then take the negative from the dc converter connect that to the battery with all the other negative terminals connect all that up bosh then that is done then you have this yellow cable here this is the switched live feed i'm going to run this up the back here to the hex easy can and that's where the hex easy can is going to come in because all i'm going to do here is just solder this onto one of the accessory plugs connect that straight to the hex easy can and then we'll use the software which i'll show you how to do shortly it's very very easy we'll set that port if you like that output on the hex easy can purely to a switched accessory which means the second the ignition comes on on the bike we want power to come straight to the cameras it sounds complicated it's really not so once all that's done once you've located the dc converter the dv module for me on the gs i found the best place for this is just right here literally sitting right on top of the rdc module the tire pressure sensor module as you can see i've got the hex easy can literally just slid straight in there and the only other place really for this is going to be here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get some uh, velcro double-sided velcro thin strip on here a thin strip on there and then that will just sit like that keeping it nice and secure and it's under the pillion seat but it's not the pillion seat will not be resting on it there'll be no pressure onto this it fits nice and snug there's not much room for anything else believe it or not the boot isn't very big on the gs that's why we all have top boxes once all that's done it's going to be a question of locating the cameras and that's what we'll do now the kit includes all standard fixings for the usual mounting scenarios the camera itself is held by a u-clip with a base section which is bolted together using the shorter screws. You can then use either the L bracket or a base plate to screw that on using the middle length screw. Use the 3M Bax rubber strip on the inside of the U-clip. This will stop the camera rotating within the clip itself. Alternative mounting solution, the one I end up using for the front of the bike, is to use one of the base plates with the 3M adhesive strip. Next we've got to look at camera locations. Now, for the front facing one, I've seen a lot of people use uh, the mounting point just above the indicator there. So the camera would sit sort of like this and then you can run the cables in down the bike back to the DV module. My main concern with this is if the, car, if the lens is sat here, well it's actually going to be sat around there. And I'm just not sure if this part of the bike, if that's going to block. The whole point of having these cameras is for insurance purposes basically, CCTV on your bike. You know, in case there's an accident, obviously I've been involved in a few and for whatever reason I've only caught one on camera. So having a, a bike camera there running all the time 
should hopefully capture anything. That's the idea, isn't it? Same as the, the bike cams. So I'm just worried that having this located there, the bike, the headlight section there is gonna block any view coming from there. So my gut reaction is to look at a mount right at the front of the bike on the nose beak there. So here's my idea. Under the nose section here on the GS is a lovely little gap. So I'm thinking maybe if we use this 3M mount setup. For this mounting setup, just watch this base section here. It's slightly off center, so one way you get plenty of clearance like this. But swap it around. And now there's not enough clearance for the head of the bolts. So just keep that in mind. Nice and easy, base plate just bolts straight on to the uh, mounting base and then use the 3M self-adhesive sticky pad on that and you're ready to go. And if we stuck that in there maybe, like so, and the camera in there, how's that going to look? That's very rough, like that. What are we thinking? I think that might be quite good. So it should sit proud of the beak and we get a, a proper peripheral vision then. It's a bit more obvious, but hmm, I think that's not a bad option. Right then folks, now I've got the front lens in place. I've ran the cable through the front of the nose cone and now we have to, I'll show you. What I had to do is I had to use two of the 3M pads just to lift that proud of the, the bolt that holds this base plate onto, the, onto that piece there. These things here, I just used two of them on top of each other like that, two straight on top like that, just to give me enough uh, clear weight of the bolt and the plastic, just gave it a, a nice little cushion, bit of clearance. So now, I don't know if you can see, see that clip there, or well, that clip holds an existing cable, so I just hooked the camera cable in there as well, there's plenty of room for it, and then I'm just going to run the cable, see there's some more wires from the loom there, I'll cable tie the cable there, and then once I've taken these parts of the trim off, I'll just run the cable under the trim, Long here, up the inside, under here with the switch live yellow feed for the converter and all these three cables will run underneath the plastics and come out this end here ready to plug into the module and the live switch feed. I'll solder a, a, an end piece onto that and that will clip into one of the ports for the Hex Easy Can and we'll configure that last. Right, let's take this trim off. So we'll start with the uh, tank trim, the tor T25 torsion bolts there and at the back here. So you need to take one, two, three, four, and I think five. Actually, do I need to take this tank ring off? Bugger. Yes, gonna have to take that tank ring off. This is just the SW Motec tank ring that I have from a tank bag. If you don't have this, you don't need to do this bit. This middle one, T27. Now that's off. Just a little bit of gentle persuasion. Always nerve wracking this, but generally it's just a little bit of gentle persuasion. Oh God. I don't like that bit. Okay, so that's that off. Now, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna loosen that, that, and that, and then I should be able to hook this on the inside of this fairing and run it down through there. So let's give that a bash. Hopefully T25s. Yep. Yeah, I think we can.
That seemed way too easy to me. But this is what I've done, come have a look. So as you can see here, I took the screw out of there and a screw out of there. And then that gives you just enough leeway to pull this away from the tank. And there is the cable here from the camera. So I'm going to cable that, tie that to the loom. And what I've done is I've just I literally just pulled that up like that and I've slid it under there. There's loads of room. So I've just fed it all the way under through here. And then down here, as you can see, there's the cable there. There's the cable here. I just fed that down. That comes down here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loosen off that bolt to allow this plastic to come up, and I'll run that cable under there, and then I'll run it just along the inside of the tray, around there, through the back, with these two cables as well, through the back, up to the DVR module. Easy. Even I can do it. Somebody who probably knows I'm doing something wrong at the moment is screaming at their screen. Apologies if I'm sweating. It is like a sweat box in here. You might be able to hear the thunder and lightning that's just started. Oh, jeez. I think it must be over 40 degrees in here. Anyway, if you've seen the Hex Easy Can vids, installation vids, then you'll know this trick. What I need to do is I'm, I, hang on. Have a look at this. I have to try and feed these wires under here without taking any of this plas these plastics off. I've got to try and feed them through here and out the back there. Now, that would be near on impossible. So what you do is you get yourself two nice long cable ties. Connect them up so it now becomes one piece. Thread it through. Then you can pull it all the way through. That comes out that end, grab your cables like so, then use a smaller cable tie, hooking that round, pulling that tight to connect the cables you want to pull through to the cable ties. That's the theory, let's see if it works. I might need to break these down into smaller amounts, but let's try. Ho ho! Na 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 Eh? How good is that? <sighs> Bosh. Things are going well. Ish. We'll see. Next part. So now we have the front camera feed, the switched live, and the connector for the uh, DC converter, which all run to the DVR module, which will be located there. That's all good. Now, we've got to do the same with the back camera. Are you still awake? I've had to open the door, folks. Look at this. The thunder and lightning started. Doesn't look too bad, does it? But literally, about a minute or two ago, good God. I thought a lorry had crashed into the back of the garage. The noise was phenomenal. Come and look at this. So this here is where I reckon I'm going to mount the rear camera. So as you can see, I've just used the existing bolt, the indicate, rear indicator bolt. So I took that bolt out. It's a T27 torsion. Took that out. Used the, the L bracket, as you can see. Screwed the bolt back in. This is all... Um, not fixed yet but as you can see there the camera just sits lovely right in there so it's clearer the number plate the actual lens is clearer the number plate it just fits in between the indicator and the top of the number plate perfectly and then what i'll have to do is i'll have to run the cable up in here We'll worry about cable tidiness, etc. once we've got everything mounted up. So yeah, I will just firm all that up, lock tight everything in place, and then run the cable in. Job done. Right, folks. So that's both front and rear camera located. Before I run all the cables and everything there, what I've done is I've hooked everything up to the DVR module. I've supplied some power via 
basically just a micro USB cable uh, to our normal mains adapter straight into the, the mains power just like a phone charger type of thing. Plugged all that in, connected up my phone, and then I've used the viewfinder on the phone with the, the, the NOF K2 app to have a look at the footage and level out all the footage. And just as a, a point of note for you, it said that the word NOV, which is written on the each camera, you'll see NOV written on it, just in there. It generally is a very good, good indicator that that is the absolute vertical center of it. So if you try and have that pointing straight up, you should, you should get a level field of vision. And I did the same with the rear, check the rear, the rear was slightly out. And again, with the in of pointing straight up, looks like I get um, level vision. As you can see in the rear there is just that slight little bit of yellow showing the rear number plate but I'm not fussed about that, I'm happy with that. So we'll just route all the cables in now, put everything back together on the bike. Oh, we still have to solder in the switch live feed for the Inov to the Hex Easy Can. So I will put the bike back together and then we'll do that. Right folks, what we need to do now is we've got to configure one of these um, ports on the Hex Easy Can. Uh, to become just like a, a live accessory feed. So all we need is, uh, is like a switch ignition feed. So as soon as the ignition comes on, it supplies power straight to the camera via this yellow wire. So what I need to do is I need to configure one of the ports to be that switch ignition. Uh, and then I will just solder the yellow wire to one of these wires here, connect that up, bosh, job's done. So to do that, this is where a bit of jiggery pokery comes in. What we need to do is on the back of the Hex Easy Can is the data port. Take off the little rubber seal, keep hold of that because it's not connected. Then, as I've seen, use the uh, micro USB cable supplied with the Hex Easy Can. I've tried other ones that I own and they didn't work. So use the one that's supplied. Plug that end in there, the other end into your computer. And then whether you're Windows or Mac, you just then have to open up the Hex Easy Can software. That will automatically connect up. Now, the beauty of the Gen 2 Hex Easy Can is you can use any port at all for anything. On the Gen 1, then there were specific sort of high amped, high powered outputs which were specifically for things like lights there was other ones specifically for the likes of the horn with the gen 2 you can use absolutely any one and just configure it how you want what i will do uh, is i just want uh, a fuse the yellow circuit according to this i just want a yellow circuit i want it to be uh, an accessory so apply so as that says, accessory ignition supply if enabled, the accessory will turn on when ignition is turned on. Additionally, the user can define a time for the accessory circuit to stay on after the ignition has been turned off. A value of zero seconds can be used for instant turn off. So I'm going to turn the uh, time out to 20 seconds. So when the ignition is turned off, there's still going to be power running to the uh, Inov K2 DVR module for 20 seconds. That'll allow it to uh, right to the DVR and job done. Yeah. The DC converter has got a one amp fuse in that so we can just match that now anyway. Uh, oh. I live in East Compton, LA. So it's just a simple switch circuit. As soon as the ignition comes on, it supplies power straight through to the DC, DC converter. It's got a one amp fuse on that circuit, hopefully. Right, I don't know if you can see. I've just used the two terminal no earth auxiliary uh, plug for the hex easy can. I've taped off the neutral terminal, negative terminal, because I'm not using that. And then all I plan to do is just solder the two ends together, put the shrink wrap over the top, shrink that on, job done. And then I can connect that on to the hex easy can and that should be us. That's the plan. Okay, so they are very roughly twisted together. I'll just put a little bit of solder on the tip. I 
as you can see, I have very shaky hands. How the heck I uh, carried a gun, I've got no idea. As you can see, that's heat shrunk on as well. And then all we should have to do now is just connect the yellow to connect the yellow to the yellow. Click. That is in. Right, should just connect everything up now. I should turn on the ignition and it should work. Just leave that there for now. Right, moment of truth. I'll we'll find my keys. Moment of truth, folks. Just going to try the ignition and let's see. That all looks like it's working. So, what we'll do now, we'll come over here into the app. So, connect to the Wi Fi. Right, so connect it to the Wi Fi. Let's open up the app. Connect it to device. Front and rear cameras. Looks like it's working. Right. Happy days. And if we turn off the ignition, let's see. Six, seven, eight, 15, 16. Now it's powering off. Okay, so there's the delay and then it powers off. Awesome. Well, that is great news, folks. At least it's working. I was keeking it actually with my soldering. Right, folks, now we have to fit the GPS sensor. Uh, this thing has to be, I think, 10 inches away from the DVR module. So I was originally going to put it up here under the, um, just literally on the very tail of the, the bike, so it go under the top box but uh, it's too close to the DVR module. So I was thinking about maybe at the front of the bike, but I don't really want it to be seen. So I was having a hunt online to see what other people had done, if anyone had done any videos on it. And I found a video by a guy called Nick Hodge. Now, Nick's actually done a full video on fitting the NLF K2 via the Hex Easy Can. Uh, I honestly hadn't seen that, but uh, he's done one. It's a bloody good video. It's a really good video. So, uh, uh, Nick, I'll leave a little link down below to your vid. So, folks, if you've not enjoyed mine, please do check Nick's out. Uh, and this is exactly where Nick mounted his GPS sensor. So, you see on the, the battery, the battery is under a triangle section on the right-hand side of the bike. Well, there's another triangle section right here on the left hand side of the bike. As you can see, there's usually a triangular piece of plastic there. There's one screw, unscrew that, uh, and then there's like a sort of suction hole there and a mounting point there. Just pull it out, job done. That normally just sits in like that, take that off. And as you can see, in here is a void, which, cannily enough, allows that to sit right in like that so what i'm going to do and next on this so i know it works is just use a little bit of double-sided velcro which i've used again nick i hadn't seen your vid mate but you've done exactly the same as me so it must work the dc converter is mounted there on some double-sided velcro and the dvr module is there again on some double-sided velcro and that's exactly what nick's done great minds think alike so what i'm going to do is just mount like that on some uh, double-sided velcro that then leaves the pred predicament of how do i run the cable from here all the way back up to the dvr module so here you go look managed to fish the cable ties through fish them through cable tied on the connector and then just pulled it through and bosh there we go
that is the GPS sensor located. Now we've just got to route the cable up, connect it up to the DVR, and that is us done. Okay then folks, that is us done with the installation. Everything is routed, front camera is routed, tail camera is routed, GPS sensor is routed, we are wired into the Hex Easy Cam, we're wired into the battery, everything is now firmly located and this is what it looks like. So DC converter, I can just pull that off, so as you see, there's some of the uh, double sided velcro so that just plunks on there so that sits nicely there it's clear for, of the seat when the seat goes on the top here even at low positions all the wires are now routed in plenty of play in the cables so here's the cables that run down to the battery here's the cables which are running through to the back the gps sensor cable runs through here that goes up through the back to here, along with the feed from the tail camera. Uh, Switch Live is plugged into the Hex Easy Can through that portal. Hex Easy Can is located there. DVR module for the Inov is there. Again, using some using some 3M uh, Velcro type stuff, I can just push that on. That keeps that nice and clean. Not a bad little setup, eh? So now, moment of truth. I know we checked earlier, but let's check again. So ignition goes on. Let's turn the engine on. Beautiful. So camera's recording, GPS is activated, wireless is on. Gosh. Happy days. Right. All we've got to do now is head out and test the footage. So we are just going to head into, hopefully get a wee bit of congestion. See what the camera picks up. I just want to do a quick sort of 10, 15 minute run. Make sure there's no issues. Have a look at the footage. My plan, folks, is as long as this footage and everything's okay, as long as the mountain all works out, my plan is to, uh, next, I'm going to use it for a wee while, and then I'll do a proper full-on review vid. Now, although Inov have now become a sponsor of the channel, I've told them that, you know, I give warts and all type re reviews. So, if I do see some negatives, I will tell you. Don't worry about that, folks, all right? But I do know from Inov, they've let me into a few little secrets. There are some big developments coming with their products. I cannot wait to see them. Where's this bus going? Yeah, I cannot wait to see them when they happen. Exciting times. So, obviously the helmet camera is the GoPro Hero 7. So that's mounted pretty much almost in the middle of my lid, kind of in line of where the camera, the Inov K2 front camera is. So let's have a little comparison. What's the two shots like? This is the Hero 7. And this is the Inov K2. Now the Hero 7 is set at 2.7K at 60 frames per second. The Inov is set at 1080 at 30 frames per second. What would be a good idea, I think, is if I set... In fact, that's exactly what I'll do. All right, I'm just going to change the Hero 7 settings to match the Inov. Okay, so the GoPro is now set at 1080 at 30 frames per second the same as the K2 front camera. The rear camera on the K2, that is 720 at 30. Now I know the, the GoPro works at a much higher bit rate. So here's the GoPro. And here's the Inov K2. Just going to pop onto some major road, get her up to national speed limits, and we'll see how the camera copes with that. What's the vibration like? Uh, 
Now this whole system is weather tight. So the cameras are sealed units, so they should hopefully be impervious to rain. DVR module, converter, GPS sensor, everything like that. Again, they should be fine where they're all located. They shouldn't be adversely affected by any water ingress at all. Water ingress, get me! I just hope the audio is working okay here. I noticed on my Slovenia trip, just got back from Slovenia a week or so ago, and having a quick look at some of the later footage, the audio was playing up. That's us up to motorway speeds. How's the camera look there? It's just me being conscious of the fact I've done some wiring. But my arse feels really hot. It feels like the seat is really hot. I don't know if it's just because it's like a million percent humidity here in the UK at the moment. Down here in the southeast, it's only 23 degrees, but it's so close and muggy. The credentials are definitely on the warm side. Quite a bumpy road we're going down here. How do the cameras cope with that? Right, I just want to have a quick look under the seat, make sure there's no nothing melted, no smouldering fires or anything. DVR all looks good. Everything looks good there. Yep, fine. All good there, I'd say. No signs of anything not happy, not happy. Beautiful. So folks, that's a nice easy step-by-step -step vid of how to install Innov K2 dual motorcycle camera system. What did you think of the footage? I was really impressed with that. The resolution is nice and crisp. I got it wrong, I've got an admission. It's 1080 at 30 frames per second, both front and rear, not 720 at the rear, like I said. Apologies. Yeah, the quality is really good, certainly good enough for evidential purposes, and I'm gonna be incorporating some of the footage into future vids, so keep an eye out there. A huge thank Thanks to Innov and Innov UK for coming on board as a channel sponsor. They weren't actually a sponsor when they supplied the K2 well over a year ago, but with all the madness going on last year, I didn't get around to footing it. So a huge thanks for them coming on board. There are lots of exciting new developments to come from Innov in the future, and I'm looking forward to showing you some of them on the channel as and when they're released. So folks, the installation itself, apologies it's quite a long vid this, but hopefully it's a nice easy step-by-step -step procedure for you to follow. You could do a tidier installation with some of the cable routing if you wanted to lift the tank, etc. But as I said, that's a little bit above my pay grade, so I went with the slightly easier option. But it's nice and simple, it does the job, and to be honest, I think it looks really good. Okay then folks, that'll do us for this week. Thanks very much if you've made it this far. A huge thank you to all you new subscribers that have come on board the channel. If you've not yet subscribed, make sure you smash that subscribe button and ding dong that bell. A huge thanks to all you clan members over on Patreon. If you fancy giving that little bit extra support, please feel free to head on over to patreon.com forward slash teapot1. Links down below. Your help is very much appreciated. Okay then folks, keep doing your thing. Get on out there. Look after those that you love. But most importantly, most importantly, live your life. Woo-ha!